What's up guys, so today I'm going to talk to you about what vaccinations you need when traveling around Southeast Asia. Now being from the UK, some of the vaccinations are actually provided from the NHS. So after seeing my GP, big up Dave, he saw me out with tetanus typhoid polio boosters as well as a three course hepatitis A, which um, you take on the first day that you're there, um, a week later and a month later. You also need a shot of hepatitis A, but I luckily already had that. So I've got about another seven years left of that, so sick. So those injections are all free off the NHS. Now, you actually have to buy some vaccinations so you don't actually melt when you come off that plane. You won't actually melt. I went to the World Nomads Travel Clinic in Turnpike Lane and I highly recommend going to one of them. They're all around London just to get these vaccinations. I needed to get my Japanese encephalitis as well as my rabies shot. The Japanese encephalitis is £90 and the rabies is £35. Japanese encephalitis is a viral brain infection that can be spread through mosquito bites and the symptoms are high temperatures, seizures, stiff neck, confusion, inability to speak, muscle weakness, paralysis, uncontrollably shaken of body parts. So before you think, oh uh, yeah, do I actually need this injection? Get it done because it's actually incurable. <laughs> Rabies is another viral infection that actually infects the nervous system as well as the brain. And you can catch that by getting bitten from animals such as dogs, bats, raccoons, foxes, jackals, mongooses, and even cats, which can be found all around Southeast Asia. So this is the part that they don't tell you. You actually need two courses of the Japanese encephalitis, three courses that I'm having for the rabies, because I'm not actually gonna be working with animals. So initially I'll be paying 285 pounds for these injections alone. Traveling ain't cheap, right? Now, by all means, we are all different. So go to your GP, doctor, and go find out what you do and what you don't need. This is just what I need. So I'm just guiding you what I have had. So definitely go and see your doctor because some of the stuff you might have already had since you were a kid. And if you're from the UK, which has the NHS, don't go paying for injections that you can get for free. Kelvin. So, malaria. If you go to a really good website called Fit for Travel, you can actually type in the specific countries that you're traveling to. Go into the malaria map and see how infected the area is. The malaria maps have actually been updated the last month or two. So the only place I've been recommended to take malaria tablets is actually Laos. I'm only gonna be there for a few days, but just in case I'm getting seven Marilone tablets, I need to take one to two days before I enter the infected area. And then I have to take them for a whole week later. So seven days I need to take them after. I actually got recommended from World Nomads to order them online because they're cheaper and they're actually a pound each rather than the consultation fee and so forth of being in the clinic. So from that being a pound each and paying a prescription fee, I only paid, I paid under 25 quid for those tablets. Whereas you've got doxycycline, they're only 15p a tablet when you buy them online, but you have to take them for a further 28 days once you left the infected area. As I'm only going to be there for less than a week, I might as well just go for Maryland. So that's pretty much the health side sorted out on my sides, but definitely go see your own doctor, see what you need to get, see what you do and what you don't need, because you never know, you might already have everything. Peace.